All yeah. right. So I think the first thing we got to determine is low ferritin is not a sign of anemia on its own. So a lot of people are told if you have low ferritin, you have iron deficiency. That's not the case. Um, I Ferritin is a tissue storage protein. It's not a te technical blood protein. So it should not be in the high in the bloodstream. An elevation of ferritin in the bloodstream is an indic indicative of inflammation or, oc or oxidative stress or tissue damage. So uh, I know what everybody was told. Uh, optimal ferritin is a sign. High ferritin is a sign of good iron storage. And we were taught in functional medicine, it should be closer to 90. So 80 to 100 was the, you want to be right in that sweet spot. And, you know, that's not true at all. The iron researchers in the world say that it should be as low as possible. Uh, and I usually look at for an optimal health to be under 25. Um, so higher ferritin, not a good thing. You don't want to necessarily be raising it. Matter of fact, we learned a lot about ferritin during COVID. This is, the, I'm not sure if anybody's heard of COVID, but this it's this kind of viral thing that's been going on. And one of the things that happened in COVID, if you look at your lab report, for women, it'll say that ferritin levels should be 15 to 150. And I think for men, it should be 15 to 300. Anytime you see a range that's that wide, that means nobody knows what the heck to do with it. So that's A. B, they found that in females specifically, that ferritin over 100 was a sign of COVID infection. So that being said, why would we ever want ferritin to be higher? Okay. So you don't want high ferritin. You want it as low as possible. The next piece of that then is, well, how do I know if I'm anemic or not? And so then we have to look at the rest of the red blood cell indices. We want to look at serum iron. We want to look at total iron binding capacity. We want to look at unbound iron binding capacity. We want to look at iron saturation. And we want to look at the RBCs, hemoglobin, hematocrit, and the rest of the differential. There's two common iron deficiency patterns that we're going to see on a blood chemistry panel. One of those is iron deficiency anemia, which means I don't have enough iron. The other is and what we call anemia of inflammation. When you have chronic inflammation, when you have chronic infections, that triggers a danger response in the cells and tissues. And what happens is the body starts sequestering and pushing iron out of the bloodstream into the storage vesicles to hide it from the threat because organisms, bacteria, viruses, love iron as a fuel source. So the body's pretty smart. It says, hey, the way to kill off a virus or starve off a virus is not allow it to have iron. We learned again during COVID, what was the virus going after? It was going after the iron in the hemoglobin of people. So um, if you have what looks like, and your doctor tells you you have anemia because your uh, iron's low, your iron saturation's low, and your ferritin's low, before you start taking iron, there's one test that you can run that's going to differentiate whether you need iron or you don't need iron. And that's something called a soluble transferrin receptor test. If that soluble transferrin receptor test is normal or low, you do not have an iron deficiency. If it's elevated, you do. So I probably should explain what that is. I'm, I'm a cell. If I need iron, I'm going to put up a bunch of these little receptors, these kind of catch things on the outside of my cell so I can catch all the cell that's coming, all the iron that's coming by and bring it into the cell. But if I'm a cell that's got plenty of iron and I don't want more, I'm not going to have many of those receptors out there because I don't want to bring more iron into, assist, into the cell. So if we run a soluble transferrin receptor, it's normal or low, even if that person looks like they have anemia, they do not need iron. The iron is being hidden, it's being sequestered because they probably have an infection, okay? So most people, A, don't try and drive your ferritin levels up by jamming a whole bunch of iron into the system. The body typically absorbs about a milligram of iron per day and excretes about a milligram of iron per day. It doesn't have a really great system for getting rid of iron. Um, and so don't load it up based on a ferritin level. Now, if you are truly iron deficient, and I just got one of these uh, results back today on the soluble transferrin receptor, it was high, person looks anemic, everything else. The next question we have to ask is, 
is this a person who's not e eating iron rich foods? Like why is the, why are they iron deficient? Are they not eating iron rich foods? Do they not have acids to, to absorb the iron? Or do they have a bleed going on? Do they have like a gastric bleed? Do they have really super, super heavy menstrual flow? Or do they have like maybe a fibroid that's causing them to suck up all the blood? There is a reason why the iron is low, not it, I, in the short run, it may be okay to give some iron, but in the long run, we have to start to consider what happened to the iron in the first place. So don't use ferritin on its own. You can't even use just that iron panel on its own to just say, that's it. This, the differentiator, the two most common causes of iron deficiency look, the iron deficiency look on, an, on a panel is going to be iron deficiency anemia, true. And that's, I don't think it's very common. I'll let Kelly answer that piece too. But the more common issue for most people is anemia of chronic inflammation. And that is a situation where you do not want to give more iron. 